Here in Vladivostok, Russia, overlooking the harbor on the Pacific Ocean, is a unique structure. Who built it? For what purpose? On a hill adjacent to and part of the Far Eastern State Technical University. The design and construction were to be accomplished in three weeks by the combined efforts of Russian and American architecture students. In the American group, James Hubble, an artist, sculptor, designer, and architect, would provide the aesthetic guidance. And Milenko Matanovich, educator and author, would explain the principles of cooperation and democracy. Eight students from North America were selected to contribute their skills. Some paid their own way. Others were given scholarships. There were 12 of us Russian students who volunteered to take part in the project. We were all very eager to be part of such an international group. The president of the university, Gennady Termov, gave us a most warm welcome. The first two days were devoted to orientation. We're trying something new. James Hubble is a practitioner of organic architecture. It comes from here. The ground. It comes from the problem. He asked that we study the site and how it would be used, the materials that are available, the weather and climate, the history of the area, and of great importance, the search for beauty in form and function. Back in the classroom, we exchanged ideas. The sketches we made reflected our dreams of what we might build. What would be most appropriate? A monument? A park? A playground? To help refine the different suggestions, we formed into teams to make clay models. Each team was made up of both Russians and Americans. Then each team presented their model to the entire group. But we couldn't build 10 different structures. For me, uh, this we next step uh, is uh, very frightening. Always you will have James would take the best ideas from all the models and synthesize them into one design, which could be built in the two weeks we had left. Do I have your permission? Mm -hmm. to do this, to he proposed an amphitheater. At the bottom, and serving as the focal point, a sphere covered with white marble mosaic would suggest a pearl, a gift from the common ocean, and a symbol of youth and the future. We had only 15 days to build our dream. We broke ground the next day. With the help of excavating equipment provided by the city, trenches were prepared for the concrete foundation and footings. We worked on installing reinforcing bars. In between concerns about the schedule, we celebrated a birthday. <laughs> Music, good food, and a common table helped bring us and the Russians closer to each other. When the rains came, 
and the trenches started turning into mud. For the next five days, almost everyone worked gathering rocks and stones. On the morning of the 13th day, with only eight days remaining, the trucks arrived. The concrete was here. To the river of concrete, we added pieces of old paving slabs to strengthen the foundation. There were now very few days before the Americans had to leave for home. For us, the hands-on experience of mixing mortar, laying bricks and stones, shoveling, and helping in all the other construction jobs was a unique experience. We worked in shifts from sun up to sundown. A basketball game helped relieve some of the tension, as did a visit to a sauna and to a local musical group. James representing the American group and Gennady Termov for the university, along with the vice mayor of Vladivostok, cut the ribbon. Although not yet fully completed, the Russian students would work on the finishing touches in the weeks to come. In just 21 days, Russians and Americans had done what seemed impossible. We celebrated and said our goodbyes. Russians and Americans, working together for a shared goal, created a symbolic structure dedicated to friendship between sister cities. <laughs>